call him. Praise the Lord, it's so good to worship and glorify Him. As He's worthy to be praised. He's great, He's wonderful, He's glorious. Just worship Him, just worship Him. Amen, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings. Welcome to our teleconference. God bless you for joining us. And we just want to go into the word of God. That God is good. Well, we know we want to give God thanks today for another day. You know, the Lord is good to us and we have to have time to appreciate him for all that he has done. He has done wonderful things for us. And the mere fact that we are alive and well 
is something to give him thanks for. We have, you know, we have so much to thank him for. Our life, our peace, our joy, and all that he has done for us. Look what the Lord has done. You know, anything that we achieve in this world, we give God thanks because it's because of the Lord. We do nothing of ourselves. It's the Lord make provision for us. Today or tonight, our topic will be God promise you peace. God promise us peace. God promise his peace. When all is failing us, God promise his peace. And so we want to look at the word of the Lord taken from Isaiah chapter 66. And before I do, let us pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify your mighty name. Your name alone is excellent. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the God who you are, a God of peace, a God of hope, a God of our salvation. And we give you praise and we give you glory for everything that you are. Hallelujah. From the beginning of creation, you were there. And even the end of this world, you will be there and you will be Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless us and keep us, guide and protect us. Inspire our heart to your word. We give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. Last week we were on the prophet Isaiah. But the Lord, the prophet, has, God has used Isaiah to prophet to prophesy many things, many great things that has come to pass, you know. And I, we know that Isaiah was truly a prophet of God, a man that God used to foretell things that would be and things that has come to pass. So we can guarantee the word of God spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah once said, um, the day when Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. When he was looking to Uzziah as someone as to get leadership. But when God took away Uzziah, he had to look to God and he saw the Lord. And so from then, he realized that himself was undone. And God sent an angel to take a live coal and put up on his tongue and said, Thy sins are purged. And then the voice said, Who shall I send? And he said, Here I am, send me. Because he saw himself as a man of unclean lips. We dwell among people of unclean lips. So God wanted a man, so God purged him. And God gave him the prophecy of his coming of you know Jesus being born of a virgin and all these prophecies that God gave him because God could use him and so in this time we're talking about the promise that God gave to Isaiah to us today a very wonderful prophecy and I'm going to start reading from Isaiah chapter 66 I'm going to read from verse 10 going down <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 66 verse 10 it says rejoice ye Jerusalem and be glad with her all he that love her rejoice for joy with her all ye that mourn for her and that he may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of a consolation that he may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of our glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and her glory and the glory of the Gentile like a flowing stream. Then shall he suck he shall be born upon the knees and be dangled upon the he shall be born upon the side sorry and he dangled upon the knees as one whose mother comforteth so will I comfort you and he shall be comforted in Jerusalem 
And when he see this, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like an herb and your and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servant and his indignation towards his enemy. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by the fire and his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. <clears throat> Verse 17 says, They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden, behold, one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, the abundance and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, it shall come, that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them, and I will send those that escape them of the nation to Tarshish. And he goes on, verse 20 says, And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of the nation upon horses and chariots and litter the mule and upon the beast, swift beasts to my holy mountain of Jerusalem. Save the Lord and all the children of Israel shall bring an offering clean vessel unto the house of the Lord and I will take them take of them the priests of the Levites of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we want to look at what God is saying to us that God has promised us that a time of rejoicing shall be. He says in verse 10, he says, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem. We should rejoice. We should rejoice always in the Lord. For thus he wants us his children to be joyful he wants us to be at peace he wants us to be have the joy of the Lord in our heart that's why Jesus came to earth to give us peace to take away our mourning to take away our sadness to take away despair rejoice ye with Jerusalem it's a time for us, even though this world seems to be fall, falling apart, it's a time for us to be rejoicing, rejoicing in the Lord. It is good. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. It is good to give praises unto the Lord. When we give praises unto the Lord, the Lord bestow upon us a blessing. The Lord will bestow upon us peace. The Lord bestow upon us joy in our heart. Rejoice he with Jerusalem. Rejoice Jerusalem, the city of God, the city of peace. Rejoice ye in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The, and ye that mourn for her, that he may give suck and be satisfied with the bread, breast of a consolation that he may milk out and delight with the abundance of her glory. God is rich. God is God is full of goodness. God is full of joy and peace. And 
if when we pray and we pray unto the Lord, when we call upon the Lord, when we rejoice in the Lord, when we give thanks unto the Lord, the Lord delights in us. And the Lord pour out his blessing upon us. We just need to have this constant communication with God. God is real. God is, God is there with us at all times. God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in times of trouble. We don't need to be like the world which is conf confused, confounded bewildered we don't need to be that way once we see jesus once we are in god once we are in jesus once we pray often once we connect to him you know one songwriter says central is never busy heavens is never busy telephone to heaven always you get a connection a connection with the almighty god a connection with jesus and it says like he that gives suck and be satisfied with the breast of consolation. We are like little babes and Jesus our Lord is the mother of all things. He is the mother that give us milk. As a mother give milk to her child. And when we realize this and when we serve God in righteousness, God pour out upon us the milk of joy and be delight with the abundance of her glory for thus saith the Lord this is what God said I will extend peace God is telling us brethren that he will extend peace like a river songwriter of saying when peace like a river attended my soul. Can you imagine how beautiful, how wonderful that peace is? How great is the peace that God promised us. What a wonderful peace. A peace that cannot be bought nor sold. It's what we get from the Lord. A peace that passeth all human understanding that is a peace that is a peace that God has promised us and how wonderful is that peace you know when Jesus was about to leave this world he said to his disciples he said my peace I will leave with you not like the world give it this is a peace that God has left with us we have it we only have to realize that we don't have to be this we don't have to be you know confused we don't have to be bewildered we don't have to be doubting we don't have to fear when we have peace that God gave us we don't have to you know we don't have to fear because this peace take away all fear the peace that God that the Lord give us is the peace to understand and know that he is with us in all situation in all circumstances and at all time we can call upon him and he's there whatever it may be it may be sickness it may be it may be anything it may be something that we need and we know that he promised to supply our every need. Let us go through this year knowing that God, knowing that the Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who came down to earth and dwell among us, let us be comforted to know that he said he is there with us. He said he will not leave us. He will not forsake us at any time. And when we understand this, all we need to do is to give him praise. We need to serve him. We need to honor him. We need to glorify him. We need to live in his word. We need to live by his word. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. What is his commandments? Is that we love one another. He says there's two, there's one commandment that we must, that we must keep. One commandment, it says that love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, 
with all thy soul, with all thy might, and with all thy strength. That's one commandment, and the other commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. So, brethren, we see that love is the key. When we serve God, when we love God, when we serve God, when we obey His Word, when we live in His Word, when we love our brethren, our neighbor as ourself, those are two commandments. And Jesus says to His disciples that these two commandments hang all the laws on the prophet. Love is the key. When we have love, when we have love, we have God with us. When we have God with us, we have everything we need. And no matter what is going on around us, the world may be falling apart. There may be earthquakes, there may be storms, there may be all sorts of calamities in diverse places. There may be everything. The sea may be raging. But we, it doesn't matter what it is. We should not fear. We should stand up on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God, Christ my Savior. Standing, standing on the promises of God. We, when we stand on the promises of God, we know that His promises is sure because God never, God stand by His word. God stands by His word. He never fail. God cannot fail. Can God, there's one thing that God can't do. He cannot fail and he will not fail. And no matter if you feel that, if we feel that we are at the edge of the cliff and we are about to fall, we will not fall. If we feel that we are drowning and there's no, we feel this is the end. It is not the end. It is never the end. Hallelujah. When, this, when the devil says yes, Jesus says no. Hallelujah. We, we have to understand this because we, we, there is a truth and there is a lie in this world. Jesus represents truth. The devil, he hides himself away. He represents lie. Everything that is against the truth. There is a light in this world and there is darkness. But we know that the light is greater than darkness. There is peace and there is despair in this world. But we know the, the world is in despair, but the children of God should be in peace. Because Jesus is peace. And this peace is beyond our imagination. He says in verse 12, the Lord says, Behold, this is the word of the Lord, I will extend peace like a river. I will extend it. I will broaden it. I will widen it. We will have peace more, more than we can contain. That's what he means. And in this 2024, we will, and God promised, he will extend the peace. And if we had peace in 2023, we will have a greater peace this year. I believe it because God says it. He will extend our peace like a river. And the glory of the Gentiles shall be like a flowing stream. We shall be like a babe. And the Lord will be like a mother to us. How a mother tell the, uh, the the writer says, can a mother's tender care cease to wow, cease towards the child she bears? A mother tender care towards an uh, uh, infant is so great, and so is the love of God towards us, brethren. This is how God loves us. It is a great love. We only need to look to Him. Psalmist says, as the eyes of the servant look upon to the uh, and upon, upon his master, and as the eyes of the maiden look upon his mistress, our mistress, so we look to you, God. So we look upon to the Lord, and the Lord looked down unto us with comfort. Verse 13 says, as one, as one who 
his mother comforted so I will comfort you God is taught, speaking to us as the mother comforted her child God says he will comfort us we only have to serve him honor him praise him glorify him live in his word obey him you know when I look back and see what how where we have come how far we have come we have come so far and backwards away from God the world has drifted so far away from God one commandment that God gave to Adam and he disobeyed one commandment and now because of this disobedience the whole world is in turmoil the whole world the entire planet from north to south east to west the whole world because of one man's disobedience just one man disobedient you know I'm thinking when we think we have a child and we have the fireplace and we said to that child listen don't touch that fire if you put your hand in the fire you will be burnt you said to the child don't go near the fire and you leave the room and you go out and you leave the child in the room you warn the child not to touch the fire but then you in the other room and you hear bah! the child begin to cry what happened I put my hand in the fire that's what happened in this case of, of um, God and Adam God, God told him not to eat that fruit that's in the midst of the garden and he disobeyed and he brought sin upon this entire world and oh but God had a plan he had a plan he said he would send someone he would come he would send let the seed of Eve bruise the head of the serpent because it all's because not disobedient is the devil the evil one that behind that that beguiled Eve in the garden tempted her lied to her that ye shall not truly die God said ye shall die but the evil one said thou shall not surely die he lied he lied to her and so there was a lie in, in the garden there was a lie in the garden and that lie in the garden caused tumult caused disobedience so the devil is the root of all the evil that we see today the devil is the root of all the evil how the world is everyone is preparing for war everyone is talking beating war drums all over in every corner every man every nation is beating war drums all because of the devil but then he hides himself he hides himself he wants everybody to believe that he doesn't exist he hides himself and God but God saw him he can't hide from God he hides from man but he can't hide from God because when he when he beguiled Eve God pronounces a curse on him God pronounced a curse he said on your belly you shall go he was a snake serpent is a snake he was a snake maybe he wasn't on his belly before but once God pronounced a curse he lived on his belly until now every snake lives on their belly because God pronounces a curse upon the snake upon the serpent the devil and he said thus shall you eat all the days of your life imagine eating dust but that the God cursed the devil he exists many people never they, many people now they are quick to say God is this and God is that why God allowed this why God allowed that that's the excuse 
Why God, that excuse people use for not serving God. Why God allow this? Why, if God exists, why he allow this? Why he allow that? What about what happened to the devil? What happens? What, how come the devil get a free get out of jail card? That nobody talks about him. But people are quick to blame God. God is perfect. God is righteous. God is judge. He is just. Just. He is a just God. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. God is beyond reproof. You can't blame God for nothing. All the world upside down, all the killing, all the wars, all the pestilence and everything that goes on. You can't blame God for nothing. Because when God created this world, he gave man dominion over this world. He gave Adam dominion. Dominion means control. Dominion means management. Adam was the CEO of entire earth. He was the chief exec executive officer of this world. Upon everything that is on the earth, everything is in the sea, everything is in the air. Adam was the chief executive officer of this world. That's the position God gave him. That's the position that God gave man. Full control. And not only that, God gave man a free will. Free will. No one else has that. God gave man a free will to choose. And so that's why this world is because of disobedient but God promised he will change that and this is where Jesus come in Adam failed God but God gave us another Adam and this Adam is Jesus he came Jesus came to correct all the wrongs that Adam the first Adam did the first Adam gave us debt because of disobedience. Then the second Adam, which is Jesus, came to give us life. And he gave us, he made the ultimate sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice he made to give us life. The sacrifice he made was to give his life. To die for this world. What a sacrifice says no greater no greater love has any man than this than that a man should lay down his life for his friend imagine how honored we are imagine how god think of us imagine how what what love what wondrous love that god could see us when we were yet in sin. The Bible says, when we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. We were not right. We was, we, was, we was away, away. We had turned away from God. But while we were yet in sin, He died for us. How wonderful it is. And in verse 14 of this chapter, Isaiah chapter 66, it says, When he see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish as an herb. When you see this, when you see the glory of God, when you see the peace that he promised us that pass all understanding, when you see, behold the presence of God and the glory of God and the power of his resurrection. When we see this, when we see it manifest before us, our heart shall rejoice and our bones shall flourish like an herb. How wonderful, how great. And even Thomas Thomas, when the disciples told Thomas that Jesus resurrected from the dead, he said they couldn't believe. He said, I can't believe that. I don't, I don't believe. Some of us sometimes doubt. But he says, when you shall see, 
when your spiritual eyes shall be open, your heart shall rejoice. When your spiritual ears shall be open, your, your heart shall rejoice. When your spiritual mouth is open, your heart shall rejoice. When you give praise from, to God with all your heart, your heart shall rejoice. And your bones shall flourish like the herbs. We just need to glorify God. We just need to praise Him. Let righteousness cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. Let there be peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Because God made us a people of peace, a people of righteousness, a people of a people who serve Him, obey Him, live for Him. And he says, he says, as I as he says, rejoice in Jerusalem, rejoice with Jerusalem. Because your peace, he said, I will extend your peace. He will extend our peace. We don't think about negative things. We don't think about tomorrow. We don't think what, what is going on around us. We only think of God. We only think of the Lord and to give Him thanks and to give Him praise and to give Him glory. Honor Him. Serve Him. Sing praises unto Him in psalms and songs and spiritual hymns. Give Him the praise that is due unto His name. He is a great God. He is mighty, but He is loving. He is caring. Like a mother, love her babe. A newborn babe, and give her and feed, feed the babe from the breast. The connection, the connection is great. The love is great. The peace is great. The comfort is great. God wants to comfort us. He says, as one mother, who comforted us, a child. She said, I will comfort you. God is good. God is good, God is great. And we just need to worship Him, work for Him. Give Him the glory, give Him the praise. He is a wonderful God. He is a loving God. He is a God of peace. And in verse 22 it says, For as the new heaven and the new earth, He promised us, there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. You know, this world will not always be the same. This world is just, this world is just, is so corrupt. There's no good when God looked down on the earth. You can imagine how we feel after God created this earth for His glory. When God, Adam was in the garden, God came down in the garden in the cool of the day and he would talk to Adam. The great almighty God would come down from the heaven in the cool of the day and he would talk to Adam. He would sit and he would talk with Adam and they would have a, a lovely conversation in the garden. But after all that, everything got disrupted by the devil and by the, the evil one. Everything got disrupted because of his lie, his cunningness. The Bible says the enemy the enemy will come only to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil can't the devil has nothing to offer man. The devil has nothing to offer man. He has nothing to offer us. He has nothing. He made nothing. He created nothing. He is nothing. And because of his nothingness, he brought it into the earth. He's nothing. He's conquered. So God says, as for the new heaven, the Bible says, John on the altar of Potmos saw a new heaven and a new earth descended from heaven. God is going to make a new... Can you imagine a new heaven and a new earth? Can you imagine? 
you know it's like buying a new pair of shoes or something like that you know it's so brand new it hasn't been worn it's beautiful everything is lovely it's nice and shiny the smell is nice it's fresh it hasn't been worn God is going to give a new heaven Isaiah 66 verse 22 for as a new heaven and a new earth I will make shall remain before me say the Lord so shall ye your seed and your name remain a new heaven God has promised us brethren let's give God praise let's give God glory let's lift him up let's forget about the you know the minor things of this world which doesn't really matter sometimes the minor things take up so much of our time the minor things take up waste our valuable time the time when we should be praising god we are taken up with minor things and everything about this earth is minor we, we have to believe that. Everything in this earth, earth is minor. The only things, the only main things important in this world is serving God. It doesn't matter what we achieve in this world. Whether financially, whether academically, whether uh, whatever we, 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 we achieve in this world, it will not stand. It will fade away. Only thing stand is how we, we we stay with God. Only thing will stand is our relationship with God. Only thing will stand in this earth is our connection with God. We need a connection. And we get a connection through faith, through prayer, through fasting, another means, through serving Him to live in for him, to sacrifice. Because in one scripture says, gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Our journey with Jesus is a sacrificial journey. And so sometimes we have to, he did say we should deny ourselves. He said, any man should come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. It's plain. A cross is never good. A cross is never pleasant. But he carried the cross. A cross, no one's like to carry a cross. It's a weight on your shoulder. But he said, if you come after me, take up your cross. And follow me. Praise the Lord. And we all followers of Christ. We are servants of the living God. We are children of the living God. We are children of the King. So he says there will be a new heaven and a new earth, which he said, I will make. So everything that we know, everything that we see, everything that we hear will fade away eventually will fade away. Nothing on this earth lasts forever. Nothing will last forever. All we have is Jesus and our salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. I will make a new heaven and a new earth where dwelleth righteousness. Where in this new heaven and this new earth which God will make there shall be no lie there shall be no darkness there shall be no fear there shall be no doubt there shall be no shadow no shadow of turning praise the Lord it is joy unspeakable and full of glory I just, I just dream about a time, you know, when I see Jesus. When this world has passed away. And when God has, when the new heaven and the new earth 
come out as John saw descend from heaven where dwelleth righteousness and peace and joy. So God says, I will, I will give you joy. Rejoice with he with Jerusalem, be glad with her. He that love her, rejoice. He that mourn with her, rejoice. Because it says, I will bring you, I will extend your peace like a river. I will extend your peace like a river and the glory of the Gentile like a flowing stream. Then shall he suck and he shall be born upon the sides and he shall be, I shall be, I will comfort you as one who his mother comforted. I will comfort you and he shall comfort, be comforted. I will comfort you. God is saying that to us right now. I will comfort you. I am with you. Call upon me. Whatever it is, whenever you're in need, I am there to deliver. If it's healing, I am there. If it's, prov if it's something you want to be provided, you need, I am there to satisfy your every need. What a God. I've seen him. David says, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's a great testimony. That's a great testimony and we too may have a similar testimony that through all our life we have never seen God forsake it, his own. I've never seen God forsake it. He has never forsaken me. I've never seen God forsaken his own. Never seen it. In all my years in the gospel, I've never seen God forsaken anyone that trusts in him. This is the confident that we have in God that he will not forsake us. He will not leave us. He will not desert us. He was there for us and he's there to comfort us. So he said, I will comfort you. I will comfort you in all times, in all your need. It's wonderful. It is great to have the comforter. The comforter has come. The Holy One. Psalmist says, cry out and shout. Cry out and shout. Thou inhabitants of Israel, for the Holy One. Thou inhabitants of Zion, for the only one, Holy One of Israel is in the midst of thee. Cry out and shout. Cry out and shout. Because the Holy One of Israel, the Holy God, is with us. And he said, I will extend your peace like a river. I will extend your peace like a river. Doubt not. Fear not. Trust in Jesus. Trust in the Lord. And it will be well. It will be well with you. God bless you, my brethren. We come to the end of our teleconference. And may the good Lord bless you. And keep you. Um, thank you for joining us. Surely God is good. God is worthy to be praised. From the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is worthy of our praise. So let us continue praising him. God bless you all. Um, God bless you. Um, Sister McLean, God bless you. God, good to have you with us tonight. God bless you. Would you like to give us a little thought on, on the word before we go, before we close? Um, right, oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord, man. Bless, bless the Lord. Bless you all in the sweet and matchless name of the 
Jesus Christ, our Lord, our soul. Amen. And happy new year. Happy new year to all you. All those wonderful people who have never heard uh, Yeah, we are still in the new year. To God be the glory. Yes, um, I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. Amen. And I'm so glad to know that I'm alive and well. You know, I'm sitting here listening to you, Brother Thompson. And as you, you said something that, um, why do men blame God? Why they don't blame the devil? Mm. I'm telling you, I say this to say that um, it was um, yesterday morning about, it was early enough, my phone rang. And when I pick it up, because from the night before, from Friday night, I don't know it by WhatsApp, not working at all. Anyway, I try, I try, and it wouldn't work, so I just left it and put it on at my bedside. But somewhat sun, such the morning, early, early, it began to ring on, on its own. Um, I call from Jamaica. And when I call, um, I couldn't answer it at all because it wasn't working. And I said, my God. I know it's not a good news this hour that be one o'clock in one o'clock in the night out there. I said, no, it's not a good hour. But for some reason, I was not shaking. I was at peace. You know, normally other times when I, when my phone rang from Jamaica, that time of the, um, the morning, I know that it's something really serious. You know, but for some reason, I had a peace, a second peace. My mind did, I didn't worry at all, but I know it was something wrong. And I lie on my bed and they call again and no phone go to the call again and him call and him call and him call and him keep calling. And all I could say, Lord of mercy. And when it was daylight out after the morning, and Tanya came in the room and I was telling her that I don't know what's wrong with the phone and their call coming from her early and I know that it's not a good call but anyway, God give me a peace because you know what, in, in the week I lie on my bed there and I would just think, you know, my mind was just flashing and I was just, you know, they are meditating and just praising God. Mm. And I heard the Spirit say to me, I am fighting your battle. Oh, and it's and it's in um Deuteronomy three and verse twenty two. When I looked for it I said, Oh my God, no fear my fight the battle. Mm. So when I got that call so after it and I um, sought the phone or did take a time before it is one of my granddaughter. Oh, she took sick at home. The mother is at work, and her ears were bleeding. And they said she faint, she fall, she fall, and no speech coming from her. She was like a dead oh, person. Lord. And they were bawling on because there was no adult in the house. And she said they were calling her from soon, but they didn't. She did not. She kind of ignored the call because they always prank her. But for some reason. She said, "Make um, text message in coming, and she did still ignore it. And then uh, she said, you know what, make her uh, read this message. And then when she reached up the rush, tell her manager that she have to go now because of um, some emergency she have to go. Mm. And she went home. When she went, she wasn't talking, blood coming out of her ears, she oh, said. Lord. And she's not responding and nothing. And she called, Mama, pray, Mama, pray. Mm. Oh, my God, my God. <laughs> and, you know, I was praying. And then she said um, she's going to the Maypin Hospital. When she went there, emergency, the doctors on strike. They didn't. Oh doctors on strike. She had to rush from Maypin Street to Kingston oh Public Lord. Hospital. They were on strike as well. Oh but Lord. only two doctors was working. And so the over 470 odd patient was here. And 78, 78 serious one with oh gunshot and accident. So you can just imagine the chaos. But thank God we prayed and God delivered. And she got through from the emergency and went to home, the doctor said I should take her to, they saw the ears bleeding, take her to a private hospital. But anyway, when they went to the private, private doctor, they said they no, didn't see any ear, no, no blood in the ears, but what happened? She's still sick there now. We pray, but 
not as how she was um mm. not, um was unresponsible mm. and um she had been allowed to take her to a next private doctor now to scan from head to toe and you know this evening she called me and we were here to like she couldn't talk to me because um she said that she just wake up and she was weak mm. and so so god is good you know mm. god was prepared because it's first in this, in sometimes in december i got um isaiah 54 and verse 17 no weapons form and form against me shall prosper and then he came back and gave me deuteronomy 3 oh uh, you cited my but but i didn't know what battle it was mm. but i thank god for jesus I thank God for Jesus that I know who he is for myself, you know, because, you know, in the wee hour of the night, you can't call pastor, you can't call evangelist. No. Oh, my God. Mm. Too late. My you God. have to know God for yourself. Yes, yes. And live a, and live a life that the Lord can use you. God. This has been just before I um, to get onto the prayer line here. A sister rang me again. Oh, she's coming from America. And um, they have to exit the plane because they found she took sick on the plane coming back to England here. They found um, um, clad, blood clots on her lungs. Mm -hmm. So she says she's in a far hospital. She went, went far, far hospital out of London. And I have to start to pray for her. Started prayer for her. And when I finished praise, I said, thank you, Sister McLean. They're coming out to, to take some things mm -hmm. on me. And it is so much that is going on. And my, one of my friends, close member again, family friend, they took, um, they live in um, somewhere in Green Chile in Westmoreland End. They took her grandson, 19, 19 plus, um, from last week, Monday, until now they can't hear nothing about him. And they're sending threat to the mother out there. So it's so much a lot of things yes. going on um, that we need to pray with. Yes. This is not time for us now to slack our riding. You know, this because it is serious, Brother Thompson. Yes, it is. And it's only the Lord alone can help us. My God. You know, we have to be, we have to gird our line and put on the whole armor. Yes, yes. And yes. ask the Lord to, to to enrich us in the spirit, in the in the anointing, because the anointing that makes the difference. You know? Yes. The anointing. And we want to have eyes of faith. We want to see behind and before. That's Praise right. God. We want God to reveal in secret because in same reveal in secret to his servant what he no reveal, what he no reveal to us not belongs to us. That's right. But when revealed to us belongs to us and our children. You know? And I'm just looking and um Jeremiah for uh, Isaiah forty three, very short, I won't want to stay long. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, yes. and he that formed thee. O Israel, yes. fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, yes. I will be with thee. That's right. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle the upon thee. Praise God. So I am going through the fire and I'm going through the water. Mm -hmm. I am going through Amen. the flood. But praise God, the fire will not burn That's me. That's right. And if water will not overflow Amen. me because I know whom I believe. Um, the other morning, you know, I was doing, um, I was reading the, uh, the prayer line and I don't know the Holy Spirit took over on me. First the morning, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. Oh my God, my God, it, and it was me alone in the house. Oh God, I couldn't control. The uh, Holy Ghost fire was burning wow, in amen. the inside. Praise I'm him. telling you. But you know, God is real. And I just want to live a humble life. I just want to stay in my corner, yes. in my life. I don't want to, I don't want, I, I don't want no collision with anyone. I just want to stay in my lane and just humble myself 
you know, and just ask the Lord to lead me on and to help me. And as he said to Jeremiah, come up higher and I will show you great and marvelous things that you do not know. The Lord bless you all, brothers. Um, I be able to tell send all who on this choir group, um, evening conference. I pray that the Lord will enrich our hearts and we will see eye to eye and we will speak as an oracle of God right. and stand out for the master because it's not time now for us to back down. It is time now for us to pass no our seat belt. Praise God, because we don't know the minute nor the hour when the Lord will put in an appearance. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to know, so we live from church and go in hell. <laughs> Amen. Let front church and go to hell. It will be too bad because there is no return ticket from hell. That's right. Amen. And when it is too, and when it is too late, it is too late. Oh God. May, may the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Mac. Wonderful um, testimony, you know, and it just shows that um, the world is depending on us because you, you know your daughter knows that you're a prayer warrior and she can trust you she may not she don't have the contact with god but she knows that you can you know god and that's why she phoned you and said pray you know so we have to be in a position where people can call upon us that's what we are here for we are the light of the world you know your daughter knows is a woman of faith and you know god so she said you contact god for her because you know that situation that she's in she needs somebody to contact God, and obviously she don't know to God, but you know God. She knows, so she, we, knows she knows as well. She was praying because she's a Christian. Well, well, that is good. That, that is good. That she knows, so if she knows, then she know she may need you to kind of brace her up as well. She knows the words of prayer. She knows the words of prayer. All right. Thank you. That's what, yeah, that she knows the words of prayer. So, so we have to be in a position, basically what I'm saying. We have to be in a position that, you know, they, somebody can say, there's somebody. There's a man, there's someone over there you can call him, ask him to contact mm -hmm. God. You know, people yes. sometimes they say they don't believe God, they don't know God, they don't, they, they don't, they don't talk, mention God. You know, but if they find themselves in a serious situation, they're going to say, you know, you, you say pray for, they say probably say pray for me. You know what I mean? Prayers needed. Mm -hmm. They call yes, upon us because you know we church, have that we yeah. supposed to have what that contact. That yes, that's what I'm saying. So they believe, but they, you know they don't have that faith to call upon God themselves. They have that con connection, you know. So something it's, you, is, you know something is keeping them away. Something keeping them away. So that's why yeah. Jesus said, "We are the light of the world. God, the world is looking to us for light. We are yes. the light of the world. The world is looking yeah, to yes. us for light." But God bless you, um, Sister Mark. You know, keep on the firing line, and you know, thank you. It's coming close to the end, so let us just keep holding on to Jesus and be remain faithful unto the end, because it has. We have to remain faithful to the end. How we start is not is not as important as how we finish. You know. God bless it's you, my dear. It's, yes, it's not how we start; it's how we finish. Because the Bible says, "He only he that endured to the end." Shall be saved. You know, and we have to make sure we and endure. Not easy, not easy and we can't all. endure. We can't endure if we let go. <laughs> we can't endure if we let go. We have to hold on <laughs> to, the yes, end. to the end. Amen. Because Praise we the have Lord. Jesus with us. We have to have Jesus with us all the way. Yes. Praise He's the Lord. Helping Jesus. Us. He's yes, helping he us. is. He and is. I bear this burden alone. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. Thank you for joining our teleconference um, tonight. I don't God know if you you are there. Yes, I'm here. God bless you. God I'm bless you, sir. Thank you for joining us. You can have a, give us a few words before we close. Yes, greetings to everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless Thank you. All. We thank the Lord for spending our lives taking over what to. Bless you. Yeah, we'll make you sing afterwards. Yes. And I've been so good to us. I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. I'm so glad to know Jesus has saved my soul and spare my life to live with you. No year. And I want to keep on praying and keep on trusting the Lord. Mm. And, um, the Bible said in um, 
That's all right, sir. That's all right. When you ready, come. In James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16, he said, Do anyone come on just afflicted, doesn't pray? If any man, any, if if may marry, let him sing psalms. Is any sick amongst you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let him pray over him, and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And if any man and, and the prayer of the faith and shall heal the sick, mm. and the Lord shall raise him up. Raise him up. And, and if, 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 if he have committed any sin, he shall be forgiven. Forgiven him. Confess one for one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. Mm-hmm. And we know that, that Jesus Christ is a healer. He has fed fervent prayer of one righteous shall prevail it not. That effective prayer for righteous shall prevail not. We know God the healer, and we know we have to pray. We are coming in sin and coming in that wrong. Let's pray to Almighty God. And if you forgive, you forgive us. And you are free. And you are really forgiving God. You are merciful God. You are kind God. You are loving God. I want to continue living a Christian life and never backslide. And I'm trying to keep the faith and keep walking with God. I have been good to us. And you pray for me, but I do the same for you. And I'll bless you all in just name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Winston. I'm in the car, actually. I'm in the car. I'm in the I'm in the car. That's all right. That's all right. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. I hope everything well, is well. Yeah, well, I have the phone. Now, now what do you think? Do you oh, okay, okay, sir. God bless yeah. you. I hope all, all is well on your side of the vineyard. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. And from the uprising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord is to be praised. Um, Sister Rose, can I call upon you to sing a song for us and then close? Greetings. I pray that um, Pastor Winston, that you get a safe journey back home because I think I heard him saying lastly that he's um, on the road. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to try right now. It's oh, okay. Fun. And I'm sure you got the heated on, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, 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 uh, just get a safe journey home we, as well. We just park. We just meet you. We park. Oh, yeah. oh, that's that's good. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. They got them safe, home, safe and sound back home. Yeah, I'll just quickly do it. Just a quick chorus. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving, moving. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving, moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving, moving there, moving here, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. One more time. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Moving, moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. Moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. Moving here, moving there, just like the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, sister. God bless you all. Bless you. God bless you. The Holy Ghost power is moving just like a magnet. It's there, moving here, moving there. God said they are that born of the Spirit is like the wind. Amen. The wind blow it where it listed. And you know one says where this wind come from or where it go. Hallelujah. That is the Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. So God bless you. Let the Holy Ghost power reign in our life. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is power. That's why God give us power in the Holy Ghost. Because God, Jesus says, ye shall receive power. Power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We need power, brethren. We have power. We mm. need power and we have power. So let us continue in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name Amen. of Jesus. God bless you all for joining us. And God, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful week. Father, we thank you. We praise you for everyone that has joined this teleconference service. I pray you will be with us all. I pray you will guide us and protect us. I pray you will let your peace flow like a river upon us. Lord God, bless everyone that is here. Touch Sister McLean and her relative in Jamaica who is suffering from ear ear bleed. Lord God, I pray you touch all her family and everyone that pertain it unto her. Lord, I pray that this year will be a year that your peace will flow upon your children. We pray that this year there shall be joy and the enemy shall be put to shame. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I claim the victory now, Lord, over every one of your children. I claim the victory. I claim deliverance. I claim joy. I claim peace. I claim righteousness in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, touch Pastor Winston and his family, Lord God. Have mercy and bless them all, Lord Jesus. Bless Peter and bless Sister Rose, my wife. Bless everyone, Lord Jesus. Let your word of comfort stay with us. Let your peace and joy stay with us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 God bless you all.